Can't you just use this recent photo? Mm. <clears throat> All right. Here you go. Woohoo! Okay, now take your time. Slow down. You see how it's dark around the outside and you have all these little round ball looking holes or balls, whatever they are, and you have all of this similar color to that. But then you see this collection of very distinct spots right here. Since Mudfoss University just dives straight into his video, I'll dive straight in as well. If we look at the right here, we see a couple yellow dots, as he described it. On the left, we see, again, a couple yellow dots. Sure, you could say the left side is more clustered than the right side, but I don't really see much of a difference besides quantity per area. I believe those are where the fibers ran out, and they break right off here. And the rest was the tendon emphasis. If you're not familiar with Mudfoss University, stop the video now, don't watch it, your sanity will thank me later. If however you are interested in this topic, I have a very large back catalog addressing his stupid, 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 stupid opinions on things that you can go check out. Long story short, all the rocks you see in the world are actually biological in, or in origin, and they're like kidneys and heart and lung and skin tissue and stuff like that of giant creatures that used to roam the planet because Bible. Now, this guy, um, Eric Rintomaki, discovered uperlites on the beach of Lake Superior in Michigan. So I'm thinking to myself, what the heck are these things? Certain specimens will have what we call activator elements in them that when the ultraviolet light is shining on it, it kind of excites the electrons and they move up to a higher state. And as they're moving back down, you'll see the light in your visible spectrum. If you study rocks and you aren't aware that certain minerals can fluoresce under ultraviolet light, you weren't paying very well attention in your introductory geology courses. While it is a unique and interesting property of certain minerals. It's not exactly an unknown property of certain minerals. And fluorite was the first mineral species that fluorescence was discovered in, so it was named after the fluorite. It's time to understand that these crystals were biological, though. That's the only thing that I want to bring to the table. Da, 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 da. I bring nothing to the table. When you look at that and you see the pattern, all these little black dots and holes and where that, where that collects. You see the stuff collect right next to the holes? All those little holes. I think I understand now what this is. Now, I don't know what the material is. We'd have to do some, some uh, chemistry here. But this clip and this video encapsulates so well what is wrong with Mudfaust University and his approach to science. He says he doesn't know what the material, what the minerals are that are glowing in this rock. But he wants to do some chemistry. You know what's funny? The person who discovered, quote unquote, these rocks brought it to a local university. And they looked at the rock and we know exactly what this rock is and what is glowing. Links below. But you can see they're all very similar but only some of them have that particular material inside of them that is, it, it, it fluoresces when it's struck by ultraviolet light. And what does that mean? It means there's a metal in here, I believe, that is the source of the reflectivity. Metals reflecting? What the fuck are you talking about? Mudfiles University literally did no research on this subject. Fluorescence is not reflection. They're not metals that are necessarily doing the fluorescence, although metals can fluoresce, but they're impurities in the rock that cause different colors. I don't... <laughs> Down below are links 
to this conversation. I just showed you a clip earlier explaining this process of fluorescence in materials. In fact, hey, I'll show it again. Mudfoss University, you ever watch this video? God help me. Please, do a little bit of research before you make your videos. It doesn't take that long. Google is your friend. Certain specimens will have what we call activator elements in them that when the ultraviolet light is shining on it, it kind of excites the electrons and they move up to a higher state and as they're moving back down, you'll see the light in your visible spectrum. Okay, I believe the Uperlite is this type of a tendon anthesis and it snaps right off here, we're all, we're all right off here really, where all those fibers run out. And all, you can see all that mottled looking effect. Now, that means that this is saturated with some form of a metal, one of those transition metals. And it appears to be that yellow looking metal. To recap his evidence for you, this picture he found on the internet of a tendon has circles on it. And the rock in the other picture has circles on it. So that rock must obviously be a tendon. Thick headed sword. This is, this is, this is. Stop touching your goddamn monitor, sweet fuck. This is from what I'm going to call a tendon anthesis, and I'll show you why I can say that. Now I have a complete heart here. At the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. Now you can see, I hope, I don't know if you can or not, all those different colors. You see the blue and the yellow and the orange and the green and and then down here is where the blood vessels were. You see one, two, three right there. Even if I wanted to grant pareidolia as evidence, you should at least find a rock that looks like a heart to say this rock looks like a heart. Come on, man. Come on, man. Give me a little break here. And the heart has all of the transition metal bloods in it. One, the heart does not have its own metal-rich blood supply. Two, metals do not mean fluorescence. Three, you don't know what you're talking about. Open up Google, type in Upalite, read an article someplace. Uh, you know, he, and all of these are basically the same as this. However, this had a certain metal in it, and that metal is the reflective source of that glow. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Certain specimens will have what we call activator elements in them that when the ultraviolet light is shining on it, it kind of excites the electrons and they move up to a higher state. And as they're moving back down, you'll see the light in your visible spectrum. Fluorescence is not reflection. Sweet Lord, figure it the fuck out. They are right in here. These are the transition metals. This is what your blood is saturated with. Without iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, all of that stuff is in your blood. If you don't have the right amounts of that stuff, you cannot give up and accept molecules. Big stack of incorrect statements there. Blood is it made up of these metals. These metals are in your body and the blood helps move them to where they need to go. But that's besides all this point. The fluorescence in something like Uperlite is not the result of metal reflecting. Fluorescence and reflection are two different things. If you just Google Uperlite, you find the geology of it, you find the chemistry of it, well established. This is a heart, and what is a heart? It's, it's, it's filled and loaded with blood. The red is regular blood, blood plasma, and all of these colored places have bonded with certain metals to become stable. I believe this is the opal heart that he talks about sometimes, which of course is funny because one, it's not a heart, it's a piece of opal, and two, there isn't transition metals in opal. It's silicone, oxygen, and hydrogen. Well, just like that yoper light you saw was yellow, and they were all this. Whoa, what? Well, just like that yoper light you saw was Yoper light? Did you just say Yoper light? It's pronounced Yoper light. This is your video. This is your six minute and 49 second video that you mispronounced the name of the rock in. 
within 6 minutes and 49 seconds, you forgot what the fuck you were talking about. I hope you realize over the course of watching this video that Mudfuss University never said the actual name of the rock. It is a cyanite sodalite. Cyanite is the igneous rock, sodalite is what is fluorescing. Mudfuss University never said that because he doesn't know what the name of the rock is. Eupalite is a phrase concocted to sell these to tourists. That's not the scientific term for them. But beyond that stupidity, I want to highlight this comment from his video. Not only is this YouTuber say that Roger is a brilliant man, but that this person is learning geology from him. That's what's scary about this. People, I laugh at these videos for the what I see to be obvious stupidity of them, but there are lots of people out there that are teaching grandchildren this material. That's why these refutations, these debunkings need to be out there. So hopefully there's something that fights the stupidity. Thanks for watching.